Edema and swelling are reduced only by transporting the fluid and waste away from the area through the venous and lymphatic systems. What are the ways to return blood to the heart and get rid of waste? Skeletal muscle contraction, respiratory process or breathing, so increased heart rate, and gravity, limb hydrostatic pressure. So we are going to use the one-way valves and exercise to help pump that fluid out of the area. So this is why in an ankle sprain you're going to do range of motion with it elevated and you can do ankle pumps, you can do circles. And then also the effects of gravity. So your limb position is going to help with the venous drainage as well. So this is the reason for elevation. Fibrin formation. This is going to be the precursor to phase number two. Fibrin is a protein which helps to form clots and localize the injury. Fibrinogen is changed to fibrin via thrombin. Fibrin clot is sticky and shuts off blood supply to the injured area containing the area and the fibrin formation begins approximately 12 hours after trauma and is complete approximately 48 hours post-injury. This is that picture that we had before of this. Pain is stimulated mechanically and chemically so the swelling in the fluids mechanically stimulate pain receptors or nociceptors on nerve endings in the area. Prostaglandins and bradykinin will chem chemically stimulate the nociceptors increasing pain. Ice. It can control the acute inflammation. So the reason control is underlined is it's not going to stop it because you need this process for all the chemical mediators to come in and heal the injured tissue. It also depresses prostaglandin production. So in this case, if you depress the prostaglandin production, you're going to decrease pain. Heat, it tends to depress chronic inflammation, but it can aggravate acute inflammation, but it has no effect on prostaglandins. So it is not going to decrease your pain. Now we're to phase two. It's going to be day three up to four to six weeks. This is the period of fibroplasia. It's the period of scar formation during the fibroblastic repair phase. Res resolution. Cell is traumatized but does not die and normal function is restored. Regeneration is the redeposit of the same kind of cell that was destroyed. And granulation is going to be formation of scar tissue in response to injury. The processes that happen in this phase are fibroblast formation, synthesis of collagen, tissue remodeling, and tissue alignment. Revascularization. Process begins at the periphery or the outside. Microphages and polymorphs produce new capillary beds and form granulation tissue gradually works its way to the center where new tissue is formed. Dermal wound repair involves mast cells which stimulate fibroblasts that remodel the extracellular matrix. Fibroblasts are going to lay down collagen in the area to form a seal over the injury and form an extracellular matrix. The deposition of collagen is very random, so it lays down wherever there is a hole or an injury to the tissue. <clears throat> How can we help to align the fibers? The main things we can do is restore normal function, because if we're working on range of motion with them, then that fiber is going to, al to align according to the stress placed on it. Wound contraction occurs following revascularization and it's marked by a decrease in the size of the original fibrin clot. Myofibroblasts accumulate at the margins of the wound and begin to move towards the center. Myofibroblasts shorten to pull the ends of the damaged tissue closer together and if you think about this it's like a superficial cut 
when it gets very tight when it's healing. Fibroblasts produce weak type 2 collagen, <coughs> making the area vulnerable to tensile forces. Water is drawn to the area and blood vessels, proprioceptive nerves, and sensory nerves begin to develop. In superficial wounds, this is called a scar. Wound remodeling, the purpose of this is to develop order in the deposited scar tissue and align it better according to the forces that are placed upon it. Around 5 to 11 days following the injury, type 3 collagen, which is weak, is replaced by type 1, which has increased tensile strength. Primary healing is going to be close approximation of wound healing and little scarring. Secondary healing, the body must fill in the cap and there is larger scarring. Swelling continues during this phase for two reasons. Secondary hypoxic injury, which is injury to healthy tissue or cells due to the lack of oxygen from the increase in all the fluid in the area. Digestive enzymes responsible for phagocytosis spill over and they kill healthy cells. Factors that can affect the rate of tissue repair are nutrition, circulation, age, drugs, immobilization, and physical agents. Maturation and remodeling, which is phase three, is day nine onward. Blends with the repair phase of healing. This is where the strengthening and alignment of the tissue can last anywhere from three to 12 months, depending on the extent of the injury. Motion and stress placed on the tissue will influence the structure. Wolf's Law. Both soft and bony tissue will respond to the physical demands placed upon them, causing them to remodel or realign along the lines of tensile force. So with us, we want to place normal stress on this injury to get the damaged tissue to align along those tensile forces and adapt to that. So in this case, you're going to have the SED principle and the overload principle. You need to use those to increase the tensile strength of whatever has been damaged at the appropriate time. At the conclusion of wound contraction, the number of fibroblasts, myofibroblasts, and macrophages are reduced to the pre-injury state. Due to this, the number of capillaries, vascularity to the area, and water content are reduced because the, the injury itself doesn't need these things. So if you imagine a superficial scar, how there is, it's a little bit more red when it's starting to heal and then as time goes by it lightens up because there's that decrease of vascularity and water to the area.